Hey everyone, Fusion 360 Evangelist Taylor Stein here, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how we can use the new sheet metal tools inside of Fusion 360 to create a fully parametric cardboard box design. So let's get to it. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create some user parameters. From the Modify drop-down menu, I'll choose Change Parameters, and I'll hit the green plus here to create our first one. I'm going to go ahead and create one here, Box Length, set that to 6 inches, and I'm going to do this two more times for the other parameters of the box. Box Height, how about 3 inches? and box width, and let's set that to four inches. And this really represents the internal volume of our box, and that's gonna be key down the road. Lastly, I'll add one more parameter, clearance, and I'll set it to 5,007 inch. That way we have a clearance parameter in case we ever need to add a slight gap to our design. To kick things off, we're gonna go ahead and create a new sketch and select the bottom plane down here. And now we can sketch a center rectangle that represents sort of the inside volume of our box. So from the sketch drop down menu, we'll choose rectangle and center rectangle. I'll place the center point on the origin and now we can use our user parameters. Here I'll enter in box width, tab over to the other side and we'll choose box length and hit enter. And we're done with our sketch. So we'll go ahead and choose stop sketch. And now let's switch on over to the sheet metal workspace. Now when this box is made, it's gonna be made out of cardboard, which is definitely different than sheet metal. So I need to change a few default values before we get started. From the modified drop-down menu, let's choose sheet metal rules and open up the option here for steel, which is default and hit the pencil to make some changes. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to cardboard and set the thickness to 3.25 millimeters. And we can change the K factor here. The K factor is really a value that represents how much the material is stretching when it's bent. And because cardboard doesn't stretch, it really just has a crease and a fold. I'm gonna set this to be zero. And also here under the bend conditions, we don't need a large bend radius. I'm just gonna set this to something very small. How about five thousandths of an inch? And I'll hit save. And now we're ready to get started. To create the base shape for our design, I'm gonna choose the flange tool. So from the create drop down menu, I'll choose flange. And by default, it wants to select all four of these edges, and that's not exactly what I want, so I'm gonna uncheck the box here for chaining and select these three edges. I'll go ahead and drag this arrow up so we can see what's going on. And now we can enter the values we want. For the distance, this is gonna be box height. And for the thickness, we wanna do one side. You'll see that it's creating the box on the outside of the sketch that we drew. And because the sketch is the internal volume that we want, this is exactly what we want. You'll see that if I change it from one side to other side, it's gonna create a box that is sort of creeping in on the volume that we wanna preserve. So I'll change this back to one side and hit okay. Next up, we can add a bend here to bend this side across to over here. So again, I'll choose the flange tool from the create dropdown menu. Select this inside edge and let's go ahead and drag it out to see what's going on. To get a better idea, I'll click on top to get a top view of our design and turn the light bulb on so that we can see our sketch. There's two very critical parts to the flange tool that are gonna make your life a whole lot easier, and that is the height datum and bend position. The height datum represents where we're sort of taking this height measurement from. When it's set to inside faces, that means that we're measuring from here down. If it's set to outside faces, it means we're measuring from here down. For the bend position, that really represents where the material's being bent. If it's set to outside, you'll see that this bend is occurring at the correct position. If this were instead inside, you'll see that again, we have material sort of intruding on the space that we're trying to preserve. So I'll make sure that the bend position is set to outside and to keep the measurement simple from the height datum, I'll set that to inside face and the height that we want to bend this by, that's gonna be box width minus our small clearance parameter. That way we don't accidentally sort of weld anything together over here. I'll go ahead and hit okay and get a home view. We can see what's going on. So now we've gone ahead and sort of closed off that side of the box, but we've left a small gap so that at the end, we can add an additional tab that's going to fold over here that we'd probably glue together to create the primary structure of this box. What we can do now is to create some bends on the top and bottom that really don't go the entire length, but maybe just a portion, uh, and then we'll fold over them again on the top and bottom. To do that, I'll go ahead and choose my flange tool, and let's select these four edges. One, two, three, and let's rotate around and four and let's drag those in to see what's going on and as far as the bend position outside is correct you'll see that if this went to inside we're now actually squishing down the volume that we want to preserve so i'll set this to outside and the height datum inside face is what we want so let's set the height to something 
like box length divided by three. That way we have flaps on the top and bottom that go one third of the way down the length of the box. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now a good thing that I've sort of gotten in the habit of is to always check if my design is going to unfold properly. To do this under the modify drop down menu, you can choose unfold. We can select just a face here that will remain stationary and check this box for unfold all bends. And once I see that it's doing what I want, I'll just go ahead and hit cancel. It's a good sort of check to make sure that you've done things properly in your design. What we need to do now are add some bends on the top and bottom that run across the entire width of the box. But what we first need to do is raise them up so that when they bend, they sit flush with these other folds that we've created. To do that, I'll press the Q hotkey to start the press pull command. And let's go ahead and select these four faces. So I'll select this one. This one will rotate around and grab the matching ones on the bottom. And now I want to create a new offset. And I can just drag this down. We want to create an offset that is this value here, which is our material thickness. In this case, we haven't made the material thickness parametric. Uh, you could if you like, but I'm going to set this to uh, the value, which is our thickness, which is 3.25 millimeters, plus our clearance parameter that we have a slight gap, and go ahead and hit OK. And now we're ready to use the flange tool to create the bends that go across the length of our box. To do this, we'll choose our flange tool, select these four edges right here, so one, two, three, four. And we're looking at the bottom of our box, but that's OK. And let's go ahead and bend these across. Bend position outside is correct. We know that we're not accidentally welding anything together because we had that slight clearance uh, incorporated there. For the height, let's go ahead and use box width divided by two, but you'll see that, that actually closes everything off completely. So I'm gonna add some parentheses around this value here. And let's just subtract off that clearance parameter. That way we have a slight gap here that we're gonna tape over at the end of the day. That looks good to me, so I'll go ahead and hit OK and return to my home view, and our box is just about done. Let's give it one quick check to make sure that it can unfold. OK, everything looks good. And now lastly, let's add that additional tab over here that we would probably glue in before we assemble the box completely. To do that, you guessed it, we're going to use our flange tool one more time, and let's go ahead and select this inside edge. It's got to make sure we're selecting the right one. It's going to be this small edge right there. And let's go ahead and bend this in. The bend position we don't want outside, we want this to go ahead and, and be inside. And for the height, uh, it doesn't really matter how much we do, it could be something like a quarter of the box length. So we could do box uh, length divided by maybe four, so it goes a quarter of the way down. And the thing that we want to change here is whether or not we're bending the entire edge or not. We don't need this to be the entire height. So let's change this from full edge to symmetric. And that distance, let's go ahead and set that to be box height divided by four. So now you can see that we just have this small tab over here that's really just a sort of half of the overall box height being folded over. Now, I wanna override one of these rules. If this was actually made out of sheet metal, we need these reliefs cut out. But because this is cardboard, I'm okay with maybe slightly tearing the material or just bending it and seeing what happens. So to do that, let's check this box here for override rules and check the box for bend relief override. And let's change the relief shape from straight to tear. And that looks good to me, so I'll hit OK. And let's go ahead and check one more time that this is going to unfold the way that we want. It is, so let's go ahead and hit cancel. And there you have it. There's our fully parametric cardboard box. Uh, to check if it's working completely, I can go ahead to my uh, user parameters button right here and change some of these values. Let's see if we change the length to something like eight inches. We'll see that the box updates. Let's go ahead and make a very uh, sort of short and flat box. So for the box height, let's do two inches and the box width, how about eight inches? And go ahead and hit OK. And let's just double check that this one unfolds. And it does, so everything's working great. Uh, so let's go ahead and we can leave it at this size right here. And lastly, let's create a flat pattern of this that we could maybe laser cut out and make our own custom cardboard box. So to do that, under the Modify drop-down menu, I'll choose Create Flat Pattern. I'll choose a stationary face. In this case, it really doesn't matter. I'll choose this face right here and hit OK. And we'll see that right there we have our flat pattern. Uh, to save this out and to send it to a laser, the easiest thing for me to do is to create a DXF file. 
So to do that, I'm going to click the Create Sketch button right here and select one of these faces of our piece of cardboard. And what that does is it automatically projects in all of the edges that are on the perimeter, including these small gaps that we have right here that are going to be folded over. But I do need to add these bend lines. I don't necessarily need them, but it would be nice if I can etch them in and actually see where I need to bend the material as opposed to guessing. So to do that, I'll hit the P hotkey to start the project tool. And I'm just going to come around and select all of these bend lines. So let's go ahead and select those. And hit OK. And now let's stop our sketch. And now let's go ahead and export this. To export this sketch, I'll right click on it and choose Save as DXF. And let's go ahead and call this Cardboard Box. And I can exit the Sheet Metal Workspace right here. And we're ready to go ahead and laser cut this out and make our own box. So there you have it. That's how you can use the new sheet metal tools inside of Fusion 360 to do something a little bit fun and create a fully parametric cardboard box design. I hope you learned a thing or two along the way. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to download the file that we made right here, there's a link below in the description. Lastly, if you want to reach out to me directly, you can always tweet me at Taylor underscore Stein. Thanks for watching.